Hello again. Something's really, really interesting has been happening. Now, um, I've been interested in a long time uh, from different sources about the uh, how, how different counting bases play, specifically three or six base, you know, and a seemingly odd base uh, for counting. Um, and the reason for this is, you know, I heard some uh, interesting opinions via particular peoples on on the internet about uh, um, being able to generate really significant constants like pi uh, as uh, integers. So if you understand that all the difficulty of calculating floating points on a computer, for example, is you ne you can't calculate an infinite uh, number like pi is in our 10 base system. Um, because, yeah, the, the floating points go on forever, um, so you're only going to be able to calculate to a certain a accuracy, and then, bah, you just have to fix it and, and deal with it. So, you know, it's not so bad for day-to-day -day trigonometry but if you're trying to send uh, you know work out a flight path uh, across the galaxy uh, you know uh, an error at zero point of a billionth is gonna be a big fucking deal so you want to get that more accurate how do you calculate infinity you don't calculate infinity you change your counting system to accommodate uh, the geometries that these numbers lie in now, the first, uh, I mean, the main, the main source I heard about the concept of pi landing as an integer was in three base is through what Pete Peterson was talking about, one of um, David Wilcox's uh, go-to guys for, uh, you know, fire out stuff. Um, you know, considering the circles he was around and what he saw and rah rah rah. Long story short, he's talking about, you know, the evolution of humans actually stemming from originally having three fingers, so we counted in three base, we count in f ten base now, because uh, five fingers each hand. So, three fingers each hand, six base, down to three base, whatever. Um, yada yada, okay. But, the way I've been thinking of it, I think may have been, um, I'll put it this way, count to five on your hand, one, two, three, four, five, five, right? No, um, not very useful, because like each of these fingers is worth the same value, counting like that, one plus one plus one plus one plus one. What if we start looking at it as if they were bits, so to speak. So if I had a five a five bit um, string, it'd be like uh, one, uh, two, three, oh, I've got to count in binary now. <laughs> I was doing it fine the other day. It was a one, two, four, six, eight, and then, you know, six plus one equals seven. So yeah, yeah you, get, you get your combination to do that. Doing that with five fingers, ow, I, I'm getting arthritis already, just thinking about it. Doing it with uh, three, so if, especially if all your fingers were, say, opposable farm type structures. Um, Whee! Spinning on my chair, because I can't. Um, you know, like this to say, so, you know, one, two, three, sorry, very rude. Uh, first, uh, one, so the one and the two. That give it, that's a three also. Hang up with me because, like everything I'm doing at the moment, I get uh, a big push of information and then I kind of got to figure it out with my thus far limited knowledge. Um, so yeah, I get from blueprints and then I have to be like, What the hell is this? Spend a little time and then I get to the point where you go, Ah, that's I got to one of those points last night. So I'm just going to jump ahead a bit here, but uh, I'll show you some of this, this counting where I'm using 
you know, a, a matrix of bits in this uh, this example here, uh, and just traversing the lattice of the bits. So you know, uh, one one zero zero. Okay, so you know, going up a diagonal, I get one. Diagonal going one. You know, across I get two. Across there I get zero. Yada yada. You know, expand that lattice to get more combinations, and then you get the combinations between. You know, adding up the lattice points. Rah, rah, rah. That's something. There's something to that, but more importantly is actually uh, this here, where you're dealing with uh, qubits, I suppose, considering it like a three-dimensional shape, but using time as the z-axis to calculate here. So, and oh, that's like a parallel computer design I've got here. That's we'll get into that later. There's. I'm starting with these the little building blocks. Flip around, hey. Um, so, where the three fingers plays into it is uh, getting to a way to to count to calculate this thing in a way that makes sense. So I don't know if what I'm figuring out here is going to work out how to calculate a pi as an integer. I don't know. I got a hunch though, and like any good scientist or inventor out there, they get a hunch and then they run with it and they use the scientific method to deduce some answers and so to speak. So, you know, just test, 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 test out the theory. Um, but yeah, counting, let's see if I do like, I don't know, three, uh, one, two, three is four. Uh, and this is the other thing. The direction in which to count should determine whether you're adding or subtracting, I think is important. Um, especially with reducing down, uh, you know, functions for, for computer logic. So, I'm wrapping my head around it best I can, okay? I'm trying, I'm trying. There's so much coming out at the moment. You know, I've got boards full of this stuff. I've got books full of this stuff. You're doing the stuff, no, there's not much in there. That's uh, something, jobs of the day. La oh yeah, I labeled some trays, very good. Um, but you know, this stuff comes out thick and fast and I do my best to deduce what I'm doing. But yeah, I feel like if you cubed um, a bit and you considered time as the z axis, then you know, to scale through uh, the number is how many iterations of pulses you do the calculation to. So, think of it the same way if I had three fingers to do that counting. Um, you start counting in uh, odds instead of evens, and um, from what I understand, from what I'm playing with on paper, it, it feels like it wraps into itself really well to create potentially really complex functions. I mean, like I said, I gotta test this out. I gotta try and build, I, I gotta, ah, oh, so much I'm trying to build in pure data at the moment. It's the one program I'm using to build everything right now. Love it. Um, but I've already got a lot of work to do to try and actually get something out as uh, a product because, you know, I'm trying to run a business here, guys. Hey, buy my stuff that doesn't exist yet soon. But it's ideas like this that make you go, ah, uh, do I persist with the state with what I'm working with or do I go straight to the, even deeper into the fundamentals and take even more time potentially? I don't know, maybe it's something I can test on the side. But if I was testing, trying to test that what I would do is build like, you know, a single bit logic, all right, work out how to traverse through it. A single bit's not gonna do much, but once you get it, you know, doubled out, so it's a two by two by two uh, cube, you know, um, so one, two on your X axis, one, two on your Y axis, as I, as I drew here, that, that, that gets the 2D part of it easily there, right? One, two, one, two, da, da, da. Uh, one, you know, three, nine, whatever. Um, You know, two by two, by two. Um, you start getting something to calculate there. So you know, one one equals two, one zero 
equals one. One zero equals one. Zero zero psh, equals zero. Uh so each duration is what I'm talking about. Uh Set that up in a one, 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 zero, one. Actually, you're traversing through these points over time, so you can actually make a vector of netting through each of the layers when you consider the, like, you know, the iterations. This is the depth to it. Oh my god, see how hard this is to get wrapped around my brain? But I'm looking forward to testing it out because, uh, this is the sort of thinking that could lead potentially to, you know, three-dimensional transistors or, uh, you know, a whole new way of computing that doesn't totally break everything that's out there at the moment. It's just a different way of counting, uh, which, if implemented right in stages, like I've said previously, all the technology I'm building augments. Yeah, it's a I'm building an you know augmentation system for the world around us because there's no point trashing everything we've built and trying to get everyone to swap over to a system that's completely incompatible with everything we know today. Who's going to pick that up? I ain't got time to do that either. You know, I work with what I got, but uh, I work towards something that would ultimately replace what we have. And one of the big ideas is you know changing the way we count potentially if there's a benefit from it that's what you gotta test you know you just what you do you come up with these ideas you test it does it work cool yes no i don't know whatever waste of time maybe who knows uh i don't think it's a waste of time that's for sure like i've already found so many uh opportunities for these designs just spurring out from the work i'm doing i mean like i've said like originally i was just looking at what i was building as a um i mean one of the original ideas behind the sequencer was basically doing a music sequencer, but instead of linear steps, I could draw a curve so you go a little faster, a little slower to do, you know, I like Aphex Twin and how he does the snare rush and stuff like that, build something like that, and it's just exploded from there to the point where, you know, I can actually sequence down to single bits traversing, you know, potential hard logic boards, uh, you know, hardware, software, doesn't matter. It's the same idea, you know, suddenly it's not just a music sequencer, you know, it's any kind of data. You know, I could be running a lighting system, I could be building uh, macros that augment how you use a computer. You know, suddenly going through awkward button presses on a phone to get jump free apps it could be like a, a single gesture to jump through that without actually having to rewrite any software because it augments the phone or it augments the computer. Um, so, you know, if I build a different counting system, I can just augment what's there and get the results that I need. But, um, yeah, just think of the uh, potential for computing. If there's a way to calculate all these very, very useful constants in our, in our mathematical lexicon uh, that are, are frustratingly infinite to calculate, such as pi, you know, phi... Oh yeah, yeah, I I know all the consonants. Fucking idiot. Um, I can't remember any. Um, but pi. But um, point being, <laughs> once you start calculating those as what a computer knows how to do, which is um, whole numbers, uh, interval. Uh, uh, just forgotten the terminology. Not floats. Fuck floats right off. Don't need them. Integer math, there we go, thank you. Integer math all the way. Figure out a way to calculate all that. Uh, just think about how that would change what we could build with computers. I mean, it, we might discover some things about the universe which uh, we just can't fathom yet because we don't have the mass. And once you start jumping up the hierarchy of mass, this is the point of it being fractal, is that instead of trying to figure out complex things, there's still these numbers you're actually looking at them as geometries that you know uh you know uh add or subtract from each other that, that modulate each other modulating geometries as 
the form of maths to get very complex equations sorted very quickly. Um, I mean, look, if we want to manipulate, uh, you know, atomic structures and molecules and stuff, I mean, that's all geometry is, right? So it would make sense to know the underlying uh, formula for those geometries. Um, and so once you're doing the maths at the level that that counts for your product, counts for building your, your molecular structures or whatever, you're going to want to be working at the uh, geometric level. So it makes sense that this, you know, fractally folds into itself and that um, the fundamental, um, you know, functions, the, the tools, the way we interact with it never actually change. They just uh, abstract out or in, you know, well, they abstract both ways. That's point I'm getting that was was what I'm doing so yeah uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tape down a few fingers this start doing this for a while see what happens bye <laughs>